Lao Pei said he had had dinner and wanted to come over to see his son. Lu Yagen replied, "If you want to see your son, call him. Why call me?" Lao Pei said his son wasn't answering his calls. Lu Yagen didn't bother to reason with him. They had been divorced for more than a decade. Their son was already working. If he wanted to see his son but couldn't, did he expect her to drag their son to him? Lao Pei asked what time their son usually came back from work. Lu Yagen impatiently replied, "Around seven o'clock." Then I'll come over at seven and wait downstairs at your place. Lu Yagen hung up the phone, thinking to herself that he knew he wasn't worthy to wait upstairs. This man, he done nothing good in his life. Not long after their marriage, he started messing around outside. Lu Yagen found out over and over again, leading to intense arguments between them. You'd think that if you were in the wrong, you'd have no face to argue, but he did and vehemently insisted. You keep going on and on about one little thing every single day. As if she were the one in the wrong, and every time she didn't forgive him, every time she brought up the past, she became the culprit, the one disturbing the family harmony. It wasn't that Lu Yagen couldn't bear his infidelity, but she couldn't bear his attitude, leading her to divorce him. Afterwards, he was involved with one woman after another, gave barely any money for raising their child, and their son was estranged from him. Thankfully, Lu Yagen was capable of supporting their child on her own and couldn't be bothered to argue with him. Now their son was doing well. Working in a big company, it seemed Lao Pei probably felt proud, or perhaps he wanted to mooch off his son or mend their relationship in hopes that his son would provide for him in his old age. In any case, he had been making a point to get closer to their son lately. It was said that he even gave his house key to their son. However, their son wasn't particularly warm towards him. He responded when he felt like it, and there were times when he wouldn't even reply to messages. While cooking, Lu Yagen wondered, there must be at least twenty or thirty women Lao Pei had been involved with in his life. What did all those ladies see in him? He wasn't particularly attractive. Didn't have much money. He was already fifty this year, and yet supposedly he even had a twenty-two-year-old girlfriend. Ah, these women fell for such tricks, having no clear understanding of themselves, loved to be flattered excessively by men. Looking at the time, her son was about to come home. Suddenly, there was a thud, sound from downstairs, followed by a scream. Lu Yagen looked out, but it was too dark to see clearly. She could only vaguely see a person lying on the ground. Someone shouted, "Lu Yagen, Lu Yagen, come down and see if this is Lao Pei." Lu Yagen ran downstairs in her slippers, and sure enough, it was Lao Pei. He was lying motionless on the ground, blood on his head, and a broken flower pot beside him. The soil was scattered around him, with only the roots still clinging to a bit of soil, and a few broken petals still attached to the stems. Call an ambulance, someone reminded her. So she dialed one two zero. We should also notify the police. We need to find out what happened. Someone else suggested. So she reported to the police. More and more onlookers were gathering, but the ambulance hadn't arrived yet when they heard their neighbor Shali scream out, "Mother, isn't this my flower pot?" She had just gotten off work and hadn't gone up to her apartment yet, with a wealthy woman's tote on her arm. After she shouted out, she looked up at her balcony. Presumably confirming her suspicion, because in that moment her face turned deadly pale. Lao Pei was taken to the hospital, where the doctor said he had a cerebral hemorrhage and needed major surgery. However, the outcomes couldn't be guaranteed, and the costs were high. The police also wanted to analyze the scene. After combining surveillance data from various angles, they concluded that a cat had knocked over the flower pot. There was no evidence of human involvement. Little Pei, having finished her cooperation with the police investigation, Hurried to the hospital, the two women were speechless when they saw each other. Little Pear was also single. After her divorce, she started her own business, which was going pretty well. She and Lu Yagen had a good relationship, often exchanging online shopping experiences and sometimes sending each other extra skincare products. Their relationship was more than that of neighbors, but they were not exactly best friends. Little Pear asked about the situation. Lu Yagen said Lao Pei was in the ICU, and they were now considering whether. Or not to perform the surgery. The doctor had said that even if they did operate, there was a chance he might end up in a vegetative state. What do we do now? Little Pear was worried sick. I'm sorry about this. Oh, it's been so many years since our divorce. Where is Xian Tuan? Xian Tuan was Lu Yagen's son's nickname, who had also grown up under Little Pear's watch. He has to work late tonight. I just called him. He will be here soon. Poor kid, having to work so late. How did he react when you told him? Lu Yagen remained silent. The situation was still unclear, and she was afraid of saying something wrong. Silence was her way of expressing her son's sorrow. 
Little Pear was a highly efficient woman. She surely didn't waste a second after the incident happened, calculating how to minimize the losses. One of her strengths is that she's not afraid to take responsibility, and one of her neutral traits is that she is quick-witted and ruthless. It seems she doesn't have any apparent weaknesses, but if there is one, it's that she's very persuasive. Once, Lu Yagen was standing in a restaurant near her neighborhood when she saw Little Pear also having a meal with her employee. Lu Yagen heard the employee saying, Pear sister, every time you call me to your office, I know what it's about, but I dare not set foot inside, because even though I am prepared, I know I'll be convinced by you and end up following your arrangements. Lu Yagen had been on the receiving end of Little Pear's persuasiveness before. Once, Little Pear single-handedly mobilized the residents of their community to apply for a change in their property management. She spoke eloquently about sticking to one's original intentions, getting the mark in one shot, the promising future, and how democracy equaled justice, among other things. Lu Yagen couldn't even begin to mimic her. Now she wondered how Little Pear planned to minimize the losses. Truth be told, Lu Yagen also understood. The only way was to promptly pull the plug. Lao Pei was 52 this year. According to the legal death compensation standards, he would be compensated 20 years of the local residents' per capita disposable income. The current annual per capita disposable income was just over 30,000 renminbi. If Lao Pei died instantly, she would only have to compensate 600,000 plus some funeral expenses, a total of around 700,000. But if he underwent surgery, needed repeated surgeries, and then became a vegetable for 10, 20 years, the expenses would be much more significant a burden for half a lifetime. Of course, Lu Yagen also wanted to pull the plug directly to avoid adding trouble to her son's future, but she couldn't be the first one to bring it up. After a while, Xian Tuan arrived. He spoke with the doctor for a while and came back with red-rimmed eyes. What's your opinion? Lu Yagen asked. I'll listen to you. We should treat him if it's possible. After all, he is your father. Lu Yagen deliberately said. She wanted to raise the bar for negotiating a plighted settlement with Little Pear especially now that Little Pear had seen how much influence she had over her son. Treat him, treat him. Little Pear feigned agreement. I've paid for today already. My credit card is maxed out. I'll raise more money first thing tomorrow. Then, each feigning concern for the other, they recommended each other to go home and rest, saying goodbye at the elevator. After Little Pear left, Xian Tuan suddenly said, Mom, I saw that woman. Which woman? My dad's girlfriend. I've seen her on my dad's phone before. She doesn't know me. Where? She was squatting in the hallway crying. I heard her making a phone call. Xian Tuan said the woman in her early 20s was weeping miserably. She had been dating his dad for more than a year now. The last time she wanted to buy a dress worth over a thousand. His father didn't want to pay for it. They were in the middle of arguing. The girl wanted to ask for 50,000 renminbi as a breakout fee, but he refused and only offered to give her 10,000 renminbi if she left. Now he hadn't even delivered on that 10,000 renminbi. And then this happened. She was crying, cursing her rotten luck. She had even gone to ask the doctor about his condition. Ridiculous, Lu Yagen said. Wait, how did she get the news so quickly? People in relationships these days seem to like to use some kind of family tracking or mag sharing feature which shows each other's phone location. Disgusting. Xian Tuan sighed and said no more. Although Lu Yagen had gone home, she was wide awake until dawn. There were two difficult issues at hand. One was to get more money from Little Pear, and the other was dealing with Lao Pei's young girlfriend. The money the girl wanted from Lao Pei hadn't even been delivered yet. How could she let Lao Pei die? This kind of desperate girl had to be handled with caution. Even though she didn't have the right to sign a discontinued life support, if she made a scene, it wouldn't look good for anyone. If she also wrote a post online explaining how heartless the ex-wife was, how she was the one who truly loved Lao Pei but had to watch him die because she was one step short of being recognized as a spouse, Lu Yagen didn't have the time to argue with her. It wasn't even 8 in the morning, but Little Pear was already knocking on the door. She brought over a bowl of thick bird's nest soup and advised Lu Yagen to take some. Lu Yagen said she couldn't eat anything, but Little Pear insisted, I'll feed you. Lu Yagen shook her head. I'm in a bit of a bind with Lao Pei's situation. She couldn't wait to remind her to get to the point. Little Pear sat down next to her and began to reason with her. She was very orderly, first expressing strong guilt and sympathy, and then envisioning the future for Lu Yagen and Xian Tuan. Xian Tuan hasn't started dating officially yet. Having a father in a vegetative state definitely wasn't good news. Moreover, Lao Pei had brain stem injury. Even if he wasn't in a vegetative state, he wouldn't be able to take care of himself for the rest of his life. 
Will it be a torture for him too? Lu Yagen responded with a ma'am. So your opinion is? Little Pear quickly straightened up. Yagen, we have to think about the future of the child. Xian Tuan still has a long way to go. I'm the main culprit. I shouldn't say too much, but I feel for you, Yagen. Life is only a few decades long, and you've already sacrificed so many years for him. If Xian Tuan has to sacrifice more years for him because of my mistake, I... Seeing Lu Yagen frown slightly, Wu Pear stretched out a hand and said, Sis, this amount, I'll give it to you separately. As long as you can make the decision for Xian Tuan. Signing to remove the life support one day earlier would spare the old man one day less of suffering. As for the other compensation, I'll pay it to Xian Tuan according to the legal provisions. What do you think? Lu Yagen said, At least 100,000, one-time payment. Little Pear thought for a moment. Business is tough these days. It's hard to make money. My son, Xian Tuan, is indecisive, soft-hearted. If I don't step in, you'll wait for him to decide? He'll definitely treat the old man and take the burden upon himself. After all, the subsequent cost of hiring caregivers or hospitalization won't come from him. Okay, give me a few days. But you have to make sure you can make the decision for Xian Tuan. Of course. This matter. We can never reveal it to Xian Tuan in our lifetime. He's just a kid. I'm afraid he won't be able to handle this sort of transaction. When the time comes, we'll draft a contract between us. Naturally, we can't tell him. The money will be his eventually anyway. Little Pear once again brought the bird's nest soup to her, and Lu Yagen took it and sipped it. A subtle atmosphere of pleasant cooperation filled the air between them. As Lu Yagen handed back the empty bowl, she said, But there's one more thing. Little Pear, home? Lu Yagen brought up Lao Pei's young girlfriend. That girl had dared to cry in the corridor last time. Next time she might dare to cry on Lao Pei's hospital bed. If she wanted to make a fuss, things could get ugly. The girl was younger than Xian Tua. How would it look if she threw a tantrum there? Thus, they should take care of the money that the girl wanted. After listening, Little Pear pondered for a while. How much do you think can settle it? Around 20,000? Just a brat. We can split that between us. The main issue is not to give her the money directly. Splitting the money, Lu Yagen could accept. But her worry was not to hand over the cash directly. After all, they didn't understand the girl's mentality. Just coming forward and offering her money in exchange for her absence would be like handing her a weapon. It was purely inviting trouble. Generally, if they ignored her, she wouldn't be able to create much of a storm. The main issue was that Liu Yakin cared about her image and was afraid of the girl making a fuss and showing her and her son to be cold and heartless in comparison to her profound sense of loyalty. Little Pear stood up, shrugged her shawl onto her shoulders, and grumbled as she walked like an old-timey leader. How can people be so foolish? Encountering such a situation but not running away, still worrying about that little bit of money. Does she want to take care of the old man for life? Unlikely. She probably just can't come to terms with the situation, and she's lacking someone experienced to guide her. Or maybe she truly has feelings for him. That would be tricky. We can't just pay her off directly. She's his official girlfriend now. If we offer her 10,000, what if she suddenly comes to her senses and demands 100,000? Lu Yagen waited for Little Pear to produce a solution. After all, she was quick with it. Do you know his phone unlock code? Lu Yagen shook her head. Do you know his bank transfer password? Lu Yagen thought for a moment and said, He most commonly uses the card from XBank, and he occasionally transfers money to Xian Tuan using that card. He's been using the same two passwords for over a decade. I should be able to guess it. Little Pear said, Well, let's take a gamble and bet that she knows Lao Pei's phone unlock password. Didn't he mention they shared their locations on some app? If it's at that level, there's a high chance she knows his unlocked password. And since you know his bank password, we can make this work. After learning of Little Pear's plan, Lu Yagen got hold of Lao Pei's phone from the doctor. He was out of battery, so she charged it. Then she had Little Pear transfer a dollar from someone else's phone to Lao Pei's account. The message displayed on the screen showed that he still had a balance of over 20,000. Next, she made a fake account book. Mimicking Lao Pei's handwriting, she first wrote down the two six-digit passwords she remembered at the header of the account book with a note. Confidential. Then she wrote down the card number of the ex -bit, wrote down the balance, added some unintelligible scribbles below, and with a key obtained from Xian Tuan, she placed the account book next to Lao Pei's bed. She bet that the girl would be tempted by the money. As long as the girl tried to transfer the cash, a subconscious and conscious understanding would emerge that her love for him wasn't worth any money. As long as she recognized this subconscious message, it would be easier to send her away later. Treating her politely, 
offering some compensation. She might come to understand her place. Sigh. While their father was dying, here they were, in a palace intrigue, all for the peace at his funeral. That night, Lu Yakin saw the girl at the entrance of the ICU. From her desperate appearance and gritted teeth, it was evident that she was resolved for the worst. She was quite a fair and petite girl. Lu Yakin took the initiative. You must be Lao Pei's girlfriend? The girl stubbornly confirmed that she was. Lu Yakin asked if she still had his house keys. The girl proudly affirmed that she did. Lu Yakin asked, Can you go to his house and get some change of clothes for him? The girl was delighted by the request, like she had been handed some authority. When she returned to the hospital, she was holding a paper bag full of Lao Pei's clothes and her bag appeared bulkier than before. Lu Yakin had a gut feeling about it. As she had to return to work, she entrusted the girl with the care of Lao Pei. She also gave her all of Lao Pei's belongings that she had received from the doctor. Half a pack of cigarettes, a lighter, a jacket, and a mobile phone. The girl silently took them. After Lu Yakin left, her heart was somewhat tumultuous. She called Little Pei. Do you think it's going to work? She asked. Little Pei reassured her. Don't worry. As long as the young lady manages to transfer the money, she'll become the one most eager for Lao Pei to die. What if she can't transfer it? Then we have other ways to deal with her, ensuring she won't be causing any trouble at the funeral. Little Pear lowered her voice on the phone. Sister Yakin, I actually empathize with you deeply. As long as she takes that little over 20,000 yuan, she'll also profoundly hope for Lao Pei not to wake up. We'll laugh at Lao Pei for the rest of our lives. What we are looking for is actually this result. It's not entirely about the money. Lu Yakin remained silent. Sometimes, she didn't know how to respond when others made too much sense. Little Pear continued, Think about it. The young girl will secretly take the money. She will definitely know that you'll find out once you go through the banking procedures. She won't even have the face to attend the funeral, let alone harass you for the rest of her life. We're spending money to buy peace for ourselves and buying a lifetime of unrest for her. So how will I know if it's successful? When you see her tomorrow, tell her that Xian Tuan's opinion is to pull the plug. See what her reaction is. The next day, Lu Yagen didn't see the girl. Little Pear stated with certainty that the money had been transferred. She urged Lu Yagen to trust her. After that, Little Pear paid 110,000, and Lu Yagen had Xian Tuan sign to remove the life support. The girl didn't show up at the funeral. Afterwards, in Lao Pei's old, shabby home, Lu Yagen saw all of his belongings left on the bed, including the account book and one of his keys. It must have been quickly and forcefully taken off. This fresh scratch marks from the keyring were visible on the key's base. Lu Yagen would close Lao Pei's bank account and ask the bank to provide a six-month statement for her and Xian Tuan. Xian Tuan showed no interest, but Lu Yagen clearly saw the girl transfer the money to her own account. 22,681.09 yuan, and she had left only 9 cents for him. She was a tough one too. 9 cents. Did she love Lao Pei? That was laughable. Had Lao Pei ever received true love from anyone? To some, his life was worth hundreds of thousands, to others, only 100,000. And some were satisfied with just spare change. It turned out that everything in life came with a price tag. When Lao Pei couldn't control his own life anymore, he probably couldn't imagine that everyone's goals were a lie. If he could see from the other side, how would he feel? During the 35-day mourning period, Chinese funeral tradition, for Lao Pei, Little Pei also attended. As she was burning the joss paper, she mumbled, I'll burn more money for you to spend. I'm sorry for what I've done. Lu Yagen thought, no need to flatter yourself. According to your logic, I also owe him. But there's no owing or not owing. He's free now. Lu Yagen quickly grabbed a stack of yellow paper, shook it out, tossed it into the fire pit, and poked at it with a stick to make it burn faster. The heat from the fire was too intense. She crouched slightly and glanced at his tombstone. The photo on it was of a man she barely recognized.